Hi there. So if you remember, we're talking about play, and today we're gonna to go to the next level age group, which is 18 to 24 months old. So 18 months to two years old. Um, and we're going to talk about the social, gross and fine motor components, the cognitive portion, and then wrapping that all into what does play look like. So at this age, socially, um, the child is expressing affection and is showing a very wide range of emotions from fear to anger to joy to sympathy. Um, they have a lot of feelings at this age. They're really developing. And because of that, they can feel frustrated sometimes and you'll definitely know. Um, 24 months is starting to get into the terrible twos as some people call them. Um, and so they're really letting their caregivers and those around them know how they're feeling. They also on the opposite side of that start to really laugh when someone is being silly or something is silly. So they're, they're really developing and honing in that sense of self that we had talked about last time. Um, as well as gross motor skills, they are really active. Um, caregivers, you're running around after these kids a lot. So right now they at 18 to 24 months, they're running, they're squatting, they're throwing balls. They can jump with both feet in place. So that's that great little jump where their feet stay still and their knees bend and they're trying to jump. Um, but it, maybe they're getting their feet off the ground a little bit, but probably not together yet. Um, they can climb on jumble, jung, jung, jungle gym equipment. That's a hard word to say. Um, and they're probably, with pandemic happening, if you're not outside a lot, climbing around things in your home too. Um, they can walk up and down stairs, maybe with some support um, holding onto a railing, and they might use same feet instead of alternating feet. Um, and that's okay. They might have a preferred leading foot at this stage. In regards to fine motor skill, they are really taking off. Um, typically within this age range, they are able to put um, four or five pieces of a puzzle together. And those are those little like island puzzles, not the jigsaw puzzles we've been doing as grown-ups during the pandemic, um, but more island puzzles, meaning there's just like one piece like an apple fits into an apple sized space, a banana fits into a banana size puzzle piece space or farm animals, that's another very popular one. They're building towers. So things are building on top of each other, probably about like, you know, sizable. Um, so see how far they can get. Uh, let's see, they're starting to draw again. We talked about like the palmer grasp and they're drawing. Now at this age, um, up to two years, um, line linear motions and circular motions is probably what they're doing they're not really drawing plus signs yet or x's or circles but they're getting more motion and more control it's more refined so that's the whole scoop with that they're able to string beads so if you have a shoelace and you put beads on the shoelace um or whatever you have or a string with dried pasta like penne pasta all of those things work for this play and remember the play is the work of children they are learning and if you use things like pasta instead of wooden beads or plastic beads all the time it's more um, texture input and then you can talk about the food as well like oh this is dry but when it's boiled we eat this um, or I eat this or you could eat this <laughs> there's a lot of different deliveries there of um, how to say something to a child they're also pretending um, like, so they could use, I, I know a lot of kids who love the tool set. Um, I have one as well, but like a hammer and nail set is pre pretend, right? Um, a little wooden hammer and they're like really working, but being able to manipulate the hammer or I have here, my wooden knife that we used a few weeks ago, um, to cut, they would start to be able to do that. And remember, and now this is a helper hand and a leading hand. So they would start to stabilize this. I would put this on a surface and then cut if I were a child, but that's how that works, of course. They can turn pages of a book um, and they can start to complete multi-task, multi-step tasks. So it's not just one and done. It might have two steps and then something has three steps that they're working on. So they're developing um, longer chains of play. 
cognitively, that's exactly what's happening. They're starting to develop uh, multi-steps together. And you might at this age be able to say, get your shoes and bring them to me. And they would be able to do those two steps. Um, inanimate objects to perform various actions. If you can pretend, uh, hello, um, is so-and-so there? Oh, hi, how are you? They would be able to pretend a banana is a phone or um, a wide variety of things, right? Um, this is also in, in not a representation of a phone, so they're able to make that connection. Um, let's see, objects for functional use, they would know that this is a knife and we cut with a knife, cut that banana um, or that wooden banana that we had just had. Um, also really important from a cognitive standpoint, object permanence is completely developed. Meaning if you hide yourself for peekaboo, they might still think it's fun, but they actually know that you're behind your hands or when you leave, you will come back. Um, or you, you know, the item is there, object permanence, they've got it. Now in regards to play, um, there's still so much happening at this age. Play schemes, they can be in combinations now. And again, it's multiple actions. So it doesn't just have to be cut the banana and done. They're building and building and building. So it has more of a flow to their play and it might be a little bit more intricate. Um, pretend and symbolic play is what they're using. Inanimate objects for play, perform tasks. Also dolls. Dolls now, they're feeding the doll, they're making the doll dance, they're hugging the doll, or they're having the dolls hug each other, um, all of those things. And pretend objects are real and they symbolize other objects. That banana as a phone, that's in the play world as well. In regards to social play, kids are still parallel play. So I'm over here playing with my thing, the other child is playing with their thing, and we're doing, we're both playing, but next to each other. We're not really interacting much yet. Um, Children, of course, are imitating what they see. Um, so if a parent is doing something, the child wants to do it. It's why, like, especially, um, I'm gonna bring my banana and knife back, cutting is great because kids wanna help in the kitchen and there are kids safe knives that are plastic and then they can help out with that. Again, it comes great with like a sensory standpoint as well. Um, it leads to a lot of opportunities. Kids are starting to participate in groups. So if you think of um, kids at this age, 18 months to 24 months, two years old, they're starting more in groups um, with their childcare. That's perfect for this age. And kids are really watching other kids. Like, what is that kid gonna do on the playground? Maybe I'd be able to do that. They're really conscious and watching what other kids are doing. And they're beginning to take turns. It's not sharing. Kids are not sharing much at this point at all. Um, it's still mine, 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 mine. Um, but they're beginning to take turns with something. One really important note um, that I want to talk about too is flexibility and ways to play with things. Help your child to be flexible. Like this doesn't always have to be the banana that I cut and I don't always have to cut it here and here. And I don't always have to take this side off and this side off their Velcro. I can mix it up or maybe I'm going to make something else that is that's not what a banana looks like, but maybe that's now a worm and it's gonna crawl along. Oh, and it goes up my arm. Oh my goodness, he's so far, he's at elbow corner. Maybe he goes all the way up to shoulder mountain. I, yes, I do love playing with kids. Um, these don't have to always be the same thing. We know as grownups, the more flexible you can be, the easier time, you, the easiest time you're going to have in life is when you're flexible. Rigidity leads to a really hard time, and um, that is true. And we can really start to work on that with children at this age. So things don't always have to be exactly as they are, and try to break out of everything has to be in one specific order. This is really hard, especially for children on the spectrum, um, but I would definitely encourage you, and we can talk about that more later if anyone wants to, about how to do that in a very positive way. Um, again, keep it positive. This is getting long, so I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow about two to three years old, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.